Hello everyone, I have here the Lego Batman Mech versus Poison Ivy Mech set. It's a strange concept, if you just take it at face value by the name. Why would Poison Ivy need a mech? Well, she doesn't, and they didn't give her one in this Poison Ivy Mech set. They gave her something that makes a lot more sense, actually. Mechs are not her style, but this totally is. It's a little bit of ground with some roots growing out of it, with some plant material growing out of it. A bit of a trunk and as you go up it becomes more and more substantial and you have all, all these leaves and branches and things and tendrils and vine elements which completely makes sense so this would be mobile she would be able to move around with this using plant motion and you know she would be able to travel around with it and use it as a mobile weapons platform because you know there's the whole kinetic aspect of being able to cause this to move and to grow vine elements out and to grab things, use them at, you know, use the bits of it as whips, use the trunks for bludgeoning. These almost look like they could be hands, you know, so you could probably grab some things. And you can also fire off some poisonous flowers, which have some poisonous uh, pollen that they would give off, I'm, I'm sure. A little stud shooter there with a couple of pieces stacked up, and you have a couple of those to use as projectiles she just stands there controlling the thing you know she's just kind of attached to the back of it and of course she can be removed from that very easily she's just attached with a couple of studs right now and in order to defeat this thing you're gonna have to beat it like get right up on top of it and beat upon it although i suppose you could also fire at it from a distance but the main thing that they want you to do here in terms of the built-in action feature is to knock it over. So anything that hits it hard enough, high enough, will knock it back like that. And that's supposed to be, you know, what it looks like to defeat Poison Ivy here. Once you can get that to happen, then you've won. Okay, it's, it's simple enough. This does feel a little, bit, a little bit wobbly, but it doesn't come apart easily. It is only attached with a single stud down there at the base, and there's a lot of weight up here. So if you get rough with it, you eventually will get that opened up. But as long as you stick the the brown portion here, this center, I don't know what that is, considered a claw, a spike, whatever it is, push that all the way through this foliage piece and into the, the, uh, the cone piece there. I almost said cylinder, the cone piece. That really helps quite a bit. And that's the Poison Ivy mech, as they call it. I think this totally makes sense, and I think it looks pretty good. The Batman mech, or Bat mech, as it were, is a traditional mech. You know, it's fully mechanical, and in that sense, it's possibly a little bit easier to, to relate to, to understand. The build for this is strange mostly by virtue of the order of operations. If you check out my build video, you'll see what I'm talking about. It just doesn't go together in kind of the expected way of, you know, building the center and then building the legs and then building the arms or anything like that. They, they uh, group things in a strange way that I suspect is the result of optimizing for flow of, of the pieces through the factory or something. I don't know. But, I mean, in the end, it's ultimately just Lego and you just put pieces together. We've got this spinning blade over here with some bat fans on it, or bat blades perhaps, and you can also spin the saw separately. That's going to be certainly very good for cutting up vines and such, so it makes sense to have it in this set. You are able to articulate those arms, bring them up and down, and also out a little bit. You can move these pauldrons to keep them out of the way to make sure that you have all the articulation that you can reasonably get out of these ratcheted joints here. You're not able to rotate this around, so you're not able to bring this across the body, unfortunately. A little bit of limitation there, but at least everything does, does hold itself together pretty well. You have wrist articulation. That's useful to put it into this form, or you can turn it this way. And look at that. You've got a pretty nice hand, so you can grab things. That's actually very nice. You know, only has a total of four fingers, but... I think it's pretty good. It's better than what they usually give us. And, you know, the overall proportions there are pretty nice. On the other side, you just have a hand, again, with the ability to rotate at the wrist. But it also has a couple of stud shooters on top, which makes sense. You know, right there. It's, it's pretty good. I like it. Um, what else? Oh, legs. 
let's talk about the legs. It has knees. Well, can you call those knees or are they just high ankles? Whatever they are, they are articulation points close to the middle of the legs, which is great. Something we don't see all that frequently. Uh, you know, you need, you need either that, you need either that or a good ankle joint. And, you know, here this kind of serves as both. So you're able to bring this forward and get it into a motion pose. Didn't really intend for that right there, but, you know, you are able to get this onto one foot. You are able to get one leg moving forward. These are not able to articulate further forward because they do have this stopper here, which is intentional just to keep it from being too loose. Uh, you can remove that piece if you want. You can get actually more articulation out of it. But this is this is not bad. This is definitely not bad. You can also change the toes, and these have enough friction in them. The toe on each foot. I guess it's just one. They have enough friction to actually hold some weight. So let's see if I can get this into a pose. There we go. So that is a simple pose that actually puts all of the weight of the right side of the body onto just the toe on that side. So that's... That's a useful additional thing that you can use for better poses, potentially. Let's see if I can get this to go farther out. I think I'm reaching the limit now. Maybe if I can bring this in just a little bit. Yeah, I'm pretty much reaching the limit. That wasn't supposed to fall out. We'll get to that in a second. But I can splay the legs a bit. There we go. Okay. That's uh, still not quite right. I can rotate this around, get it a little bit more flat with that toe. There we go. Yeah. You know, so I'm causing some separation there. Uh, basic story that I'm trying to get across here is that this does have useful articulation, probably more than most mechs that they do. Not the best. Certainly the arms aren't the best, but I like these wrists. I just wish that you could bring the arms across the body a little bit better. You've got the little bat head design up here. It uses just a few stickers, not too many. They make good use of all of these gunmetal gray colored bat pieces around the whole thing and this opens up in the front to give you access and also on the top to give you access to the control area where you just stand batman you know he's just attached with his legs to the base he doesn't have any control levers or anything to hold on to i think that's that's okay i wish it closed up a little better i think i might be able to change the orientation of those two little arms in there to make it close up just a little bit closer he is leaning back as far as he can go right now. I feel like I would like to reduce that gap in there just a little bit. As as designed, though, it's it's a little bit gappy, so you can see his his face face through there. I would prefer not to see that. And then this thing, all right. So I mentioned that we would talk about this. It's a net shooter. Whoopsie, that's not good. That's a little bit annoying, actually. You have to kind of avoid it carefully, otherwise that will definitely fall off too easily. But, you know, by default it's in this stowed position. Almost looks like it would be a thruster for a jump pack back there. But you bring it up and extend it, and let me get that net piece. Notice they're not using the new net shooter that they came out with. Uh, that was already used in the city line. They've gone back to using the big jet engine housing, which is interesting. I think it's just a... Uh, color was available and or the size and the connection points for it but you're supposed to you know stuff a net in there this is a nice feeling material but it doesn't like to get bundled up it wants to stay it wants to stay free man the idea is that you push the plunger back here and you knock that out and Sometimes it'll unfold properly. If you fold it just right, you might get the technique down to get it to unfold always. These are, are cool in concept, but they rarely ever actually hook on to anything. I've done demonstrations before where I tried you know, just just using the, uh, the builds as intended, and it, they just don't work that great. But the idea is that you would try to net Poison Ivy here, and even just trying to put it on her directly it's not really grabbing so it's more of a more of a thought that counts kind of thing here if you can get it stuck great but otherwise i really recommend if you want to take this down just go right up to her and just punch her in the face the villain firefly here looks fantastic to me fully built up with the pack and the flames coming out and the flamethrower this just looks like a great action display pose to me. 
I love this. I think they've done a really fantastic job here using a maximum number of the the power blast blast and splat pieces, the little pack of superheroes uh action translucent parts that you know can be used to represent different types of of fire and power and things depending upon the colors. They you know they just go together very nicely here and they harmonize well. I like it. I like the fact that you have to build up the pack from individual pieces. You know, I like how much building actually goes into this in total. Very nice use of these parts. The only one thing here that is not good at all is the fact that it's very front heavy in this pose with the flamethrower fully out with the maximum amount of flame streaming out of it. It's extremely front heavy. Really wants to tap to tip forward at a moment's notice. So it's not stable. It, it will stay if you don't breathe on it and you don't vibrate uh, the room at all and don't walk around just stay perfectly stable but otherwise it definitely wants to fall forward now you can cheat a little bit you can move some of these pieces you know get them to not be properly attached so it's kind of angling back just a bit like that it's not a legal connection but if anybody complains about it you can just say i'll make it legal but uh it's it's just one option for dealing with that otherwise if you don't have the flamethrower out all the way it helps a lot with stability a lot if you don't have all of a lot not 100 percent if you don't have all of the flame attached to the end of that it also helps you know you can bring one of these things in a lot of things can help with that but no matter what it's going to be front heavy here and they don't really give you any solid option for dealing with that but gosh it sure looks good seems worth it to me to add in one extra piece, you know, give it some sort of extra long base or offset it somehow if you can. Getting in a little closer, this appears to be based on the The Batman animation series version of Firefly. I am definitely not a DC Comics or superheroes in general uh, comics, you know, historian or scholar or anything, so I might be off on that. There may be a better match, but this just looks like a very good well, a perfect match, really, uh, in Lego form to that form. And I think the print on the torso looks very good. No print for the hips is too bad, but it's not, it's not really necessary. The small amount of print used for the helmet, I think, is fine. And the design, I think, is a pretty good match. As for the head used under there, there's only one facial expression. And I think it actually is a good match as well. Not the best print there is a little bit of wonkiness around the, the top part of the lip, but the expression I think is pretty proper. This this whole figure makes sense to me. Poison Ivy, meanwhile, is kind of plain. You know, we had gotten a really, really amazing looking Poison Ivy in recent memory, and here they've rolled back to go to a simpler comic style. I feel like that's half intentional that they didn't want it to look too good in a way you know too detailed but it's also kind of cheap i don't know it just feels like a step back and still lego's printing of skin tones is not good it's really not good and it bothers me it's just it's just too bad it's supposed to be skin tone and it's just not thick enough it's just not opaque enough you know even uh even the hair piece that I just took off ha has no printing on it. You know, it's just a single color. The faces are pretty good. Gosh, that, again, the skin tone on the back does not look good. The faces are pretty good. The choice of hair is good. The bright red is great. But, you know, it's just a step down. It feels like a, like a classic, almost a retro edition version of this figure. The flash is also included with some more of the... Uh, the power blaster burst pieces attached together to good effect. It's a pretty good looking flash with the dual molded legs. Excellent. No print on them, but I think that's okay. Again, for, you know, this animated style or comic style. And the torso print looks really good to me. Print for the little winglets on the, the helmet is, is okay. Could have been better. But yeah, the print on the back of the torso looks good. It's just it's just great to get those dual molded legs, which are pretty perfect. They're just so crisp that 
that delineation between the red and the yellow is, is almost invisible unless you get really, really close to it. This is a rubbery style head. Uh, bad skin tone printing again for that face. Just too bad. Here, even worse, because it's not only lacking opacity, but it has the stamp marks in it. You know, you see all the, the little parts where air got in there, or possibly even a little bit of of other debris some solid debris or something so that's unfortunate you know kind of does injustice <laughs> to this figure that is otherwise very good last up batman well there's more confirmation that this is indeed intended to be a you know a throwback kind of retro styled set but i'm still not gonna give the Poison Ivy figure too much benefit of the doubt because the last one that they made was so much better. Uh, they could have put something extra on there. But this Batman, for what he is, I think looks pretty good. Um, would have been nice to get some print for the hip, though. Doesn't need him for the legs. Doesn't need any for the legs. But the hip piece, I think, could have added some, some nice detail. Got the modern style of... of cape piece of course the print on the back of the torso looks good yeah that's that's pretty proper it's a little bit offset strangely but mm, it really doesn't bother me that much i mean most of the time you're not even going to see that print at all and he has two faces there's one the headband is a little bit worn there but yeah yeah fortunately you know you don't you don't really suffer much from that when you when you put the cowl over it on either side but it's just another a little bit of symptom, I think, of, of Lego's very poor printing right now, especially on minifig pieces. Because you know, we've gotten a lot of these in the past that looked so much better than that, that had much closer to a proper white band for the headband or eye line area. Looking at the volume of stuff here, not just in the picture, but in person, and considering it has four figures, I personally would want to value this at about $35 US. Uh, when you consider that it has 375 pieces, not too many of them being tiny pieces, and a fair number of them being medium-sized to, to large-ish sized, and with interesting color combinations and such. I think that $40 US is not out of the question. I would definitely prefer to see it come down to 35 but it's not bad as it is and yeah i think the the builds are good the selection of figures is good uh i like this non-mech thing here i think the bat mech is decent i think it's better than many mechs that lego has done in the past i really wish that he was able to bring the arms across sideways that's one thing that's that's missing but otherwise Otherwise, it's pretty good. You know, it's pretty poseable. It's more poseable than most. I like these things always. They just provide so many options for things that you can do. The net shooter really does not work well. It's it's basically just a, a little thing to augment your imagination, but it doesn't take it doesn't take the place of it at all because you're not gonna make that happen ever. The Firefly setup with his stand and everything, I think is fantastic. I love that, except for the fact that it does fall over easily. But with a little bit of customization, I believe you can rectify that, or at the very least, you know, attaching it to a studded base. Overall, I feel like this is a pretty successful set, with the exception of the poor prints on the figures especially, and the limited amount of printing for Poison Ivy. If they were 100%, if the designer, forgetting about the the you know the the bean counters and the pencil pushers if the designer really wanted this to be a simplified looking poison ivy i i get it but i still wish that there was a little bit more detail you know it's just a matter of establish establishing expectation which they have done now and i know they can do so much better than that but yeah it's partially a subjective thing anyway uh leftover pieces from this set there are quite a few, including a couple of the extra power blast or burst pieces, which is great. Some batarang type stuff, some hollow studded stuff. You know, a very good selection. Plus, they also have a couple extra studs for the stud shooters on the bat mech. 
I did a build for this set that you can find over on my build channel, which I will link to right now because I'm done. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you later.